good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Clayton. Good evening. Hi, hi, good evening. I'm Clayton from uh, LA Rainbow Community. Um, why are we doing this? So basically, um, we're having a little discussion with the new board and um, we felt that we did not want to let COVID take the best of us and still we wanted to reach out to the community and be there for the community. So at the moment, what's available to us is our, our technology and being online. So we wanted to hold some discussions that maybe you don't hear so frequently out in mainstream media and basically are more relevant for for the general population but also for our for our community as such so we hopefully start bringing up new topics as we go along um and today um uh, we're glad to have matthew bartolo on board who's a sex and relationships counselor um and i'll let you uh, I'll let matthew introduce himself a bit and give us a bit of a background about himself He's from the Willingness team. Um, so Matthew, how are you, first of all? Very good, thank you. It was a, a long day, but I've been looking forward to this because I'm very interested in this kind of discussion, this kind of conversation. And as, as you were saying, I'm a sex and relationship um, psychotherapist. I, I've been doing this, this work for about nine, 10 years now. I'm locally and in the UK, mostly um, locally. And I work with all kinds of people, people who have been married for a very long time, people who are single and very active, people who are not active at all. Um, so obviously, although I'm a sex and relationship therapist, it's the first time I'm ever um, living in a situation in a society as, as this that we're experiencing now. Of course. So uh, what, what I'm saying is, I'm getting, getting sorry? It's a scenario of many firsts for all of us, I guess. Yes, yes. So, so what I'll be sharing today are just ideas of what I think. So, you know, we've never experienced this before. So uh, I don't have any guidebook that would help us. You know, it's just a conversation. And I'm here to facilitate this kind of conversation. Yes, of course, by all means. Um, uh, so actually, when when we started discussing this topic internally as a team, the first question that comes to mind is how is the current situation impacting the dating scene and relationships in general? Um, what do you think? What are you seeing right now? I, I would say that we, um, people who are usually um, on dating apps are being more careful, more cautious in general um, in meeting new people. So people who are, had already um, fuck buddies or, or dating someone or seeing someone, in my opinion and in my experience, I'm not feeling safe meeting that same person, but meeting new people, I think, because we're being bombarded with all these messages all the time to stay away from meeting uh, new people. Uh, people are shying away from that. Yes. And um, are you... In your work, are you seeing even effect on current relationships? So be, besides the dating um, aspect, with with long-term relationship or said relationships, are you seeing any impact that that have that the situation is having on us? Yeah, yes. I, I'm used to giving talks and telling people to spend more time together. Nowadays, I'm finding myself asking people to go to a different room, <laughs> take longer to shower, spend as much time away from each other as possible. Because relationships are a mixture of, and the right balance, whatever that is, between the me time and us time. And right now, people who are, well, most of us are very busy. We get home at eight, nine at night, and we crash together on the sofa. And we used to call that quality time. Nowadays, we're, most of us are stuck at home with our loved one or partner or family. And... That, that is impacting our mental health and our sanity as well when it of comes course. to spending all this time together. So even couples that I see at the clinic, I can see that they're bickering on more, I would dare say, petty stuff. Of course, it's not petty for them, you know, but things that before they used to let pass, nowadays they're not because it's more intense, especially people who live in apartments where the physical space is restricted, yeah. um, you are next to each other even during the day because you're working from home. 
And it's yeah. interesting that some of us are experiencing another part of our partner, another part of his identity or her identity, where we're seeing, ah, okay, so suddenly my partner is good at delegating, my partner is good at communicating, it's with me that he doesn't open up. Look at, at how he manages his um, meetings at work, how open he is, and how motivating he is. Mm. Okay? And maybe we realize that with us, our partner is negative, but when it comes to his team or his job, when he's in meetings, we can hear how positive, how empowering, how motivating he is. And that might make us hopefully reflect on what we're putting into the relationship and how we're changing this very motivating leader at work to someone who is more negative at home. Is it something that we're doing or is it just his persona at work, which is different from his or her persona at, at home, eh? But isn't it something like which happens in all spheres, like we're one character at home, we're one character in our, with our friends, we're another character in our, our work environment, and now it's an enmeshment of everything probably in the same ah, household. Yes, but, right? but thanks to what's going on around us, I think we're getting to experience it more. Yes. And I think that it could be sexy as well. I think seeing our partner being passionate about something else or, or being really, you know, this leader, this, this motivated person, this doer, this go-getter could be very sexy because eroticism is um, very much in conflict with intimacy. So those of us who are in a long relationship, in a stable relationship, whatever stable means. Um, we're used to the predictable. We're used to, you know, the safe. We're used to the kind of person that we know day after day. And the eroticism is the opposite, the novelty. Uh -huh. It's the passion. It's seeing our partner in their inner element. So, so I've had couples, you know, who were struggling with their sex life, but because they're working on the kitchen table and their partner is on the sofa doing things. They're like, hmm, I'm finding this sexy. I'm finding this really sexy that my partner um, gets asked all these questions and makes all these difficult decisions. I never thought my partner had such an important role or is so passionate about what they do. And that does help us and help relationships sometimes. Okay, interesting. Um... Going back to today's discussion, um, I was, as soon as the whole situation of COVID impacted Malta, I was also seeing um, LGBT-related articles mostly, um, that people are still going out, um, using Grindr as such. Um, how do you see this is impacting us? Like, should people keep using dating apps during this time? What do you think? I think this is a time where we're cautious. Eh? Whilst I'm saying this, I know that we always talk about people being, should, um, they should be cautious when it comes to HIV to STIs. But sometimes when we feel desire, the desire, the passion is so strong that we just can't give uh, access, you know, we just want to go for it. But the repercussions are what they are. I mean, we can see that Social distancing is important because of the risks of a virus that there's still no vaccine for. So if we think of STIs or HIV, nowadays there's PrEP, there's um, all sorts of antibiotics, all sorts of treatment. But when it comes to COVID, it's something which is very new. So I, I would urge um, people listening even to try as much as possible to stay away from um, meeting new people. Um, whilst I'm saying this, I know that it's quite difficult. I mean, it is very difficult for people to... Especially for us, like, I, I see it particularly with LGBT people. They feel like a double layer of isolation. So if many times they're either living alone um, or if they're living with their family, sometimes the family is not always um, so understanding. Uh, I would say I'm, I'm putting a blanket statement here, but... It is the case that many times either people are not feeling comfortable in their homes because most of us, uh, putting again a blanket thing, most of us are, are living single life or, or with their parents. So 
you're, you're yearning for this connection and it becomes quite difficult not to do so. Um, so it's quite, a, it's a, quite a battle, it's, it's a challenge, isn't it? It is, it is. Um, because uh, when one feels lonely, then the sense of desire is not just for the release, not to ejaculate, but also to connect. On That's some right. kind of level. So, so um, although we can talk about masturbation and how to make masturbation as interesting as possible and uh, as new as possible in this situation, and use sex toys and, and, and all sorts of gadgets and, and different movements, the connection with another human being is very intense. And that kind of intensity is very difficult to get through masturbation. Having said that, if after a month, six weeks that we've been logged in, it's just a month now. Um, people feel that they really can't live without sexual connection. Uh, they might need to consider if, if they have a, a sort of addiction as well. So, so I understand that it's the intensity of the sexual encounter is one of the best feelings. You know, it's sex, food, alcohol, and music, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and drugs. Um, but when it comes to living in such a time and trying to restrict ourselves, I think it's important to even examine ourselves and, and reflect on our behavior. And if it's something which we really can't live without, we need to check with ourselves. Is this some kind of addiction? Is it a problem? Um, even when it comes to porn use. I mean, porn is fantastic. It's, it's, a, it's another alternative to meeting new people. But maybe instead of always going on the same website, looking at the same kind of videos, maybe it's, a, it's, a, it's the right time to try different kinds of things. Mm. For example, our own fantasy. Or else, listening to audio porn instead of the visual porn. I know that men especially are very much aroused by what they see and what they hear. So what they see is very important. But the more men and women I meet, the more I realize that when someone is an avid user of porn, so I'm not talking about the guy, the, 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 the person who watches porn three times a week. I'm talking about the person who watches porn at least once a day. And unless they do that, they feel anxious. They feel strange. Um, I do see that then it makes people lazy when it comes to sex. You know, because one of the best things about sex is also the fantasy. So you could be with a person and you're fantasizing. And the fantasy, it makes the encounter even more um, intense. But people who watch porn very frequently, I, I find, they become a bit lazy because they're used to opening their laptop, their mobile phone, and letting images arouse them instead of them. And sometimes I do this experiment with my clients and they say, listen, try and... Uh, masturbate for this week, for these two weeks, without any kind of porn. And you, most of them would come back saying, I found it really hard. I couldn't oh. even have a hard on because of this. And it took me a long time to, to even get turned on. And that is because our mind is getting used to mm -hmm. being lazy. Uh, I, I, I compare it to people who are as old as I am and maybe older um, to the Maltese population who know how to speak, uh, well, understand Italian through TV. Most people of my generation can, un can, can sure. follow a co any kind of conversation in Italian. But when it comes to us speaking it, we stutter, we, 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 we find it very difficult, we miss words. Why? Because we're used to the Italian language in a passive mo mode. And I find that sometimes when we watch porn too often, um, and not mix it with fantasy as well. It could give us the same feeling with sex, that we are aroused in a passive way. So the image is arousing me instead of my fantasies, my thoughts arousing me. I'd like people to comment. So, so if you don't agree with what I'm saying, just um, or, or want to ask anything, just try to comment on the side on our chat, and I'm more than happy to comment on those. Um, so talking about this, how, what do you suggest? How can people ease the sexual tension that, tension that it's arising? Obviously not meeting anyone, resorting to just porn. What do you suggest in, this, in these current situations? I think 
it is a time to adapt. So, so again, I'm going to emphasize this, that nothing beats, um, in my opinion, the intensity of, of an encounter, definitely. But I think there are next best things, for example, sexting, um, or phone sex, or camera sex. So of course, there are the dangers of being recorded, there are the dangers of your images and your um, penis being circulated all around Malta and the world, but I think it's the next best thing. So if you do it safely, okay, where you don't show your face, where you can um, do it with someone that you trust, could be a friend, someone you've known for some time, you can always resort to that. So there is still that kind of connection. You can still hear the breathing in your earphones. You can still see the other person being aroused or hear them being aroused. If it's, a, if it's phone sex, you can fantasize together and come at the same time. Most of the time, I find when it's phone sex, you can imagine the other person being much sexier than they really are. So it makes it even better. So, so you're hearing their voice, you're hearing, you know, but you can imagine them looking as sexy as, and as fit as you like, which is very different from when you meet people who are um, quite different from what they say they are. So it is a mix of um, connecting with another human being, but at the same time, it's a mix with fantasy as well, if it's phone sex. It's also, I think, going back on the dating app, in a way, it can serve as a way of connecting to other people, not physically meeting, um, going into voyeurism or other sorts of play, um, and at the same time, fulfilling that sort of uh, sexual need. So it can still serve in a way um, going on dating apps and connecting. In a way, but at the same time, as, as we always encourage, to be careful and to build trust. So there has to be a dance of, of mutual trust and build up rather than just doing, <clears throat> doing it in the first instance with whoever yeah. comes along. Yes. And you could also have an e-day day. So you can right. get a couple of beers or, or a bottle of wine or a good whiskey, um, and have a webcam session with this person, have a good chat yeah. with this person. So instead of taking them out or meeting them at a bar or at a, at a club, you can still do it at home. Yeah. So it's the same way that you could do this at your premises on um, what you call them bean bags and have this kind of chat where we're having it in this manner as well. So the same way we can have e dates as well. Why not? Yeah. Could be the new normal for the time being. Right? Well, why not? Why not? You know. But if you're hooking up like this, you can just. Leave the meeting, you know, if you're using Zoom or something like Because I do this most of the day nowadays, I'm meeting right. people online. And some of my colleagues, especially the way we were taught, was that this is not intimate at all. Hmm. And we should avoid online meetings as much as possible. And I'm saying this in mind, keeping the e dates in mind. But what I'm finding is, both as a client and as a, and as a therapist, that it's more focused, it could be more focused. So I, I would dare say that with some clients, it's even more intimate. Mm. So I, I can imagine that I, I've had dates like this, but with people I was with, it was never a first date, but I can see myself having a first date like this, and I, I think it would be more focused. Because there's no, no, a lot yeah. of distractions around, you know? And, and you're still at your own home. Exactly. Which, so I had clients of mine um, talk about things that they would never, they had never talked about during the session when we were in the same room, face to face, even though they had been coming to me for six months. And when I asked them, how come you chose, you know, this setting to talk about it? They say, because it feels safer, because you're behind the screen, I'm in my home, you know, so it, it can be actually more intimate. That's right. Yeah, it could be a way to overcome your anxiety of meet, physically meeting someone because you don't know if he's a serial killer or just... Yes, yes. and, and you, can still hear the, you can still hear the tone, you can still see yeah. um, the physical, um, the body language, the, the facial expressions, so you can still connect with that person. But sometimes we say that when you meet face-to-face, -face, you can read the body language. So even from the people I can see, I can see who's engaged, who's less engaged. 
and in a way, if we have to meet outside, it's like, you know, we spend some time together. I, I know these people. Okay? Especially you, because you're talking to me. So, so there's more of a, of a connection happening there, you know? When it comes to solo playing, I, I did some thinking, and I wrote this list just to come up with um, a list to share with you today. And again, if there's anyone who wants to add things to this list, please, please do so. Um, obviously, there's porn, but I think there's not much I can teach anyone on porn nowadays because, oh. uh, you know, porn are, are, are giving premium memberships yeah. for three months. So if you haven't um, got in your premium membership, you know, you can do that after this meeting. Um, there are different kinds of porn. Try different porn. This is the time when most of us are stuck in the house. Um, so try and change things. Try and do different things. Sometimes we're too busy that we tend to go on the same website, same kind of category to get it over and done with. Maybe this time you can spend more time, invest more time in yourself. So even if you're watching porn, maybe you can um, look for different kind of porn. See what you're into, what you're definitely not into, what you'll never watch again, what might interest you in the future. Um, mix it with fantasy as well. So, so fantasy is, in my opinion, and the way I see it, it's like a, an empty library. And every time we have sex ourselves or we watch porn or we hear people talking about their sex life, um, we have these new USB sticks with all these different images. And whenever we want to experience sexual fantasy, we go in this library and get different clips and add them and, and mix them together. So you could use images that you watched already from porn in the past, sex that you had already. <clears throat> and again, you can change that man, that woman, in, that person in any kind of um, body that you like, facial expressions that you like. Yes. Perhaps someone met you who have asked, um, how about porn addiction? What can you say about this? At, at this point in time, I, I, I'm finding that um, people who used to struggle with porn addiction are finding it even more difficult because of lack of human interaction and also because there's more idle time at home. And when it comes to addiction, in order to stop yourself from engaging with the addiction, one of the best ways, in my, in my opinion, is to add as many steps from when you feel the desire to actually doing it, okay? So if I'm at work and I really feel like watching porn, I need to finish up my sessions, get home, cook, wash, then watch porn. Open my laptop, get on my, my website, choose a movie and watch, watch porn. If you're at home all day and you're having meetings all day on the laptop or you're watching Netflix on the laptop, most of the steps are not in the way because it's you and the laptop already. So all you have to do is go on the porn site and watch it. So, so the association with the porn is in your hands all the time. And I'm not talking about the penis in your hands. I'm talking about the laptop or the mobile. Because you're spending more time alone with your laptop or with your mo mobile accessory. So it's even more difficult. And... Some people are bored because they're stuck at home. And when we're bored, it's easier to fall into some kind of vice, if not addiction. Some of us are eating more. Others of us are finishing up all their whiskeys. Um, others are smoking more, sleeping more. Why? Because we're bored and we tend to fall on the vices that we do our, our weakness. So if there is a porn addiction, this is the time to do something about it because it can get very, very bad. Because we don't know how long this is going to last for, and it can lead to the addiction being more um, and part, part of, your, of what you're doing, of who you are, can engulf you even more. To stay away from the addiction, ideally, you keep yourself as busy as possible. Okay, so try and meet people online, make dates online even with your relatives, with your friends, so that you keep your mind off the porn as much as possible. If you just can't, you know, get your hands off yourself and you really, really need to 
get released, try and do it using your own sexual fantasy to try and avoid falling into um, watching porn for, for a long time. But when it comes to solo play, um, I think, you know, sp spending some proper time with yourself, using different kinds of toys, different kinds of loops, um, trying different orifices, trying different um, movements, you know? You can try different um, butt plugs, different... Um, um, anal beads, um, different loops, even to experiment and see what you're into. Um, even trying different strokes. Most of us get used to one kind of masturbating, okay, be it clitoral, be it vaginal, be it anal, be it, be it um, penis, and we just stick to that. We, we find the movement and the pressure, pressure that works, and we just keep going for it every day or most days of the week. And then it becomes the routine. So maybe this is the time to spend some more time trying different strokes, trying different pressure, different movements. You know, I, I know that, that um, online I saw some, some sex toy company even selling lockdown quarantine um, kits, you know, uh, so, so even locally. Yeah. So you look at it, you know, some are good, some are, some are not as good. But um, Different strokes is very important because I, whenever I talk to clients about self-pleasuring and masturbating, we do get stuck to one kind of, you know, movement, one, one kind of stroke. And even touching different parts of your body at the same time, playing with your anus whilst masturbating, whilst stroking your penis, um, touching your clitoris whilst fingering yourself, even anally. You know, so, so trying different things, explore your body. And it's not just the genital area. You know, it could be the breast, the neck, the thighs, trying different pressure, different kinds of grips. So spend some time exploring yourself, you know? So, so use this time, um, this lack of contact with other people to actually get to know yourself. And some might say, my I've done this in my 20s, I know my body. Chances are that one, as your body is changing, as you're growing, there are different zones that you enjoy more than you used to. And there are places that you've missed for all these times, for all this time. So try different um, things. Spending more time in the shower, um, spending more time having a, a longer bath and, and you know, enjoying your body, not just sexually, but even sensually. You know? Touch yourself how you would like to be touched. Take yourself out on a date, you know, and, and have a drink, put some music on. Treat yourself well. Treat yourself, temper yourself for a night in. So nowadays we're spending a lot of nights in. So one of them just say, you know what? I'm just going to be so, you know, cheesy with myself, so, so romantic with myself. I'm just going to put my favorite playlist on. Make sure you're not sharing it on Spotify because everyone will know what you're doing. Because that, that does happen if you have a very sexy, saucy um, playlist and you don't want others to know about it. Make sure that your play, um, Spotify playlist is not public because all your friends will get a notification of what you're doing unless you want them to know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But you, you know, have a drink if you're into drinking, have coffee if you're into coffee, whatever you, you enjoy. And Spend some good time with yourself. I think it's also a good time as well. It reminds me what you're saying um, from a book I read, The Power of Now, like taking, using all this effort right now to think about the now and not let the, the future uh, makes, makes you anxious or the past uh, make you burden. So even when, when you're exploring your body, you're fully... Um, your senses are all in, in tune with what you're feeling and what you're sensing. So it, it's a good book. I really recommend it to anyone who's listening, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, but there's also, um, what's it called? The one about logotherapy, Finding Meaning um, by, by Franklin, Victor Franklin, which is the man and meaning, I think it's called. And it's very good because it talks about finding meaning within yourself. And I think um, 
sexually, sensually, um, individually, in relationships. This is the time to stop and reflect. You know, nature is making us stop and reflect. Now we can stay at home Friday night and be really grumpy because usually I'm out on a Friday night. But I can say, what should I be learning from this experience? You know, about me, about my existence, about what I usually do. Because we, we all have, the same way that we, have, we all have the same strokes when it comes to masturbating, we all have the same coping strategies. And I think, when nature, when the world takes them away from us, we can either stay there sulking because we can't take our whiskey with our friends anymore, or else we can say, okay, so now that there's no you know, friends and whiskey, what can I do? Let, let me find another coping strategy. Let me build another coping strategy. Let me look into myself and see what else gives me pleasure. No? So if I can't hook up, what else can give me pleasure? Is it a book? Is it some good music? Is it, you know, spending some time alone, like spending time with friends, with relatives? And then when all this is over, you'll find yourself with two coping strategies. Because you can still go for whiskey with your friends, you can still hook up, but you found another coping strategy, whatever that is. Yeah. And you might have developed more meaningful relationships with people who are already in your life. So I think, well, it, it's not what I think, it's, it's how it is, because, you know, Darwin always said, it's survival of people who adapt. It's not survival of the fittest. If it were survival of the fittest, dinosaurs would still be alive, because they're the strongest creatures ever. It is survival of the, people, of the creatures that can adapt. And this is the time where we need to adapt, sexually, sensually, emotionally, psychologically, relationally, you know, financially as well. So let's spend some time even enjoying our body, having a bath, having a shower, masturbating, but also finding um, new aspects of ourselves that we can enjoy. And actually, this leads me to my last question, which I prepared for you, Matthew. Um, what do you think will be the, the longer term impact on how we approach dating and relationships once we regain the sense of normality back? So what do you think? I mean, obviously, no one knows, but... What, what's your insight about this? I wonder, you, you know how, how traveling has been permanently affected because of 9-11 and how nowadays in every airport you're going to pass through scanners yeah. and remove your shoes, remove your belts. I think traveling can never go back to how it was pre-9-11. Definitely not. No. Yeah. And I think that what we're going through will change. Mm -hmm. How we perceive it. I agree. And I'm pretty sure it's going to change how we mm -hmm. perceive dating and relationships as well. I mean, I always make it a point that I shake hands with my clients exactly. when they come in and when they go back out. Will it be the day that Chris Fern says, now it's okay to shake hands? If I shake hands, will I, you know, wait for another month just to be sure? Uh -huh. Exactly. That's what for, I think as well, yes. Will I wait for all? the world to be clear of coronavirus, to shake hands again. Mm -hmm. Will my clients want to shake hands? Because until two months ago, people were very happy to I shake their hands. But if I do it a couple of times and I'm rejected, will I still do it with my clients? Or will I say, I think I'll, I'll, I'll not do I'll it? I'll refrain from doing it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So, so the levels of anxiety are, are so high at the moment for most of the general population, even more so for people who already suffered from anxiety before, and germaphobes, you know, people yeah. who already yeah. had yeah. some yeah. kind of OCD, definitely. But even people who don't usually suffer from anxiety um, are feeling anxious because there's this thing which is so harmful, and we keep hearing of how people can die from this. And unfortunately, social media makes every death feels so close and so personal. So if someone dies in China, nowadays I can hear his life story and where he was a doctor and how old he was, and it makes it feel like he was my neighbor. Obviously, my body, my brain is going to react to that. But um, apart from that, then we, we are surrounded by people who are potentially 
carriers of this minute thing, which we can't see, which is so deadly and potentially deadly, not deadly, but potentially deadly. So yes, it will change relationships, you know? And don't forget, this is something which has been going on for a month at least, and we don't know how long it will go for. And we know that if there's a lifestyle change, for a lifestyle change to happen and to be maintained permanently or almost permanently, we need to do it for three months. So if I decide one fine day to start going to the gym, once I manage to do it X times of days a week, okay, and for three months, then it becomes a lifestyle, it becomes ingrained in me. So what's going to happen when I'm used to visiting my mom, visiting my partner, and not hugging, not kissing? Mm. How, how is that going to affect us the first time that we're going to be okay to kiss and to, to, to hug again? Um, it depends on the person as well. So if people are used to, uh, I would rather not have contact, then chances are they'll use this as, as an excuse and keep pushing this for as long as they can. Listen, mm. don't touch me because I'm scared, you know? Yeah. But people who really miss that physical contact, it might work the other way around where they, they appreciate it more. Same thing with... Um, going out with um, things that before we used to take for granted, like jobs, you know? I'm meeting clients who are being told that they'll work three times uh, a week. The same clients used to um, complain that they're working too much, that they, they hate their job. Now they're fighting for their job. So, so how is that affecting their relationship with employment now? People who used to live a certain lifestyle, and now need to cut off that lifestyle because their business owners and their businesses are, are, are not doing as well as they used to. So these are all things that affect also our identity, our self-confidence. So it's not just the direct effect of touching each other, kissing each other, snogging, breathing on each other and all this, but even ourselves as human beings where um, we have built our identity, our confidence, so on the brand of our top, the brand of our watch, um, what we do, we're always asking each other, what do you do? Uh, I'm a doctor, ah, I, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, ah, you know? And now maybe those were taken away from us. So how will I introduce myself now when I'm meeting someone new, if I've lost my business? If I always, you know, yeah, was so, so yeah. proud of the fact and I always introduce myself by what I do. What if I Another option could be, because the question is about um, the relationships as well. So it could be that someone used to work so much because they felt that that's their role in the relationship. And now that they had to work less hours because there wasn't enough to work for them, they appreciate that their role can be different in their relationship as well. That they mm -hmm. are more appreciated for their time than for the money that they get in the relationship. And they can choose when we go back to, well, well when this is over, because I can't say go back to how it was, because it will never be as, as it was before. Um, maybe we can all learn from this and decide what we go back to. Not just, you know, try our hardest to build the kind of life we had before, but maybe we can filter things and decide what to introduce back into our life and what we did very well without and don't need anymore in our lives. I think it all depends on how we live life and our perception of it. You know? And some of our fears will be confirmed because of what we're going through. And some of um, life lessons can be learned for those who are open to it. You know? So the person who was always anxious about money might go back to working even harder because they'll use these three months of low business to confirm in their mind that they can end up without any money. So they can end up working even more than they did two months ago because of the fear that this might happen again to them. Others might say, you know what? Um, I, I was living a, a balanced life. I worked less, still had food, still had a good life. I don't need as many hours of work. I can enjoy my family more. I can enjoy a long time more than being at, at work all the time. So it depends on the individual. I don't think that we're all going to be affected in the same way, 
like any other kind of tragedy, no? There are the children of the alcoholic father, some become social workers working with alcoholics, some become alcoholics themselves. And anything in between, you know? So it all depends on our perception of life, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a very good topic, even for another time. Yeah. The amount of men I see at the clinic who complain about um, wanting to meet people on a deeper level, but they only end up being offered just sex. You know, not because, you know, hooking up is, is something which you shouldn't do. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that there are quite a lot of men out there who are looking for a deeper or a different kind of relationship, more emotional relationship, but they find that they're only offered sex. Yeah. But then, but then, when you ask, when I ask them, Isma, where, where, where do you hang out? Where do you, if you, end, if you, if you hang out in Pembroke, if you hang out in Rhinder only, and your picture is a penis, you know, this that is the message that you, you you're giving out there. So, so th- there are men who are looking um, for more emotional relationships. There are quite a lot out there. F- from the man that I see at my clinic alone, I'm pretty sure that there's quite a lot. And I'm sure there are much more that don't come to my clinic. So it is important, even maybe for art, to create a space where, you know, men who and women and, and people who are into um, looking for something different, not just sexual, and they can meet up and feel safe knowing that yes. the people are there for that reason. It's different. And I think that for a very long time, our society talked about heterosexual people, especially um, homosexual men, as those who have a different kind of sex. Mm. And because of that, I think we associated homosexuality, especially homosexuality, and because of that, the, all, the whole LGBT community, but especially homosexuality, to sex and promiscuity, which okay. I think is not the case. Exactly. But, but as a heteronormative society, I think it's our fault because that's how we perceived homosexuality for a very long time. And hopefully, because of what you're doing, because of what has been done by MGRM, by Rainbow, by, by ARC, um, where there's um, different kinds of marriage, finally, and, and adoption and all this, um, we can see and understand that it's not just about being in sex, it's not about oral sex, you know? It's about being in love with someone of the same gender, or a different okay. gender. Yeah. But it takes Definitely. time, it takes time to challenge. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Well done. Uh, Matthew, I really I'm really happy we had this conversation this evening. Same here, so, same here. 